What's up resellers? I'm Rebecca and you're watching Rebecca the Reseller. Thanks for joining me today for a What's Sold on Poshmark video. I am so excited to share my sales with you, all of my stats, my summary, and some interesting things about what went on this week. So stay tuned. If it's your first time here, hi, I'm Rebecca. I'm a semi full-time reseller on Poshmark ThreadUp and I dabble in several other things. And I hope that you will continue to join me for videos here and subscribe for more reselling content all about Poshmark and how to increase your Poshmark sales. Poshmark tips and tricks and of course videos like today what sold on Poshmark be sure before you leave like the video and then check out the description for all of my recommendations all the cool things that I have for you I put everything down there the theme for this week is swimsuits and sweaters I couldn't believe it between selling tons of cashmere items and sweaters and cardigans to swimsuits and warm weather things it was really just like one side of the aisle or the other this week and I will share it all with you I sold over 950 $50 this week, so almost close to that $1,000. Pretty happy with this week's sales. I'm excited to share with you what sold on Poshmark this week for me. So let's jump into the sales summary and then I'll share with you all the individual sales. I made this super fancy graphic this week, so we'll see how this goes. Trying it out for the first time, but I thought it'd be nice to give you a little bit of a visual while I go over the sales stats for the week. So as you can see, we're talking about January 23rd through January 29th. This week I had a total number of sales sales of 36. So not 36 items that sold because I did have bundles, but 36 total number of sales. As far as the dollar amount for those sales, it was $953. So I felt like that was pretty good. That gives me an ASP even better than last week. The ASP is $26.47. Now again, that is per the sale, not per the item. So there were some bundles that averaged then $26. The average sales per day that I had was $136, which is not where it needs to be. It needs to be closer to like 280 for me to hit the exact reselling goals that I'm interested in. I've got a little bit of work to do as far as my Poshmark portion of my reselling. People always ask how many active listings. I am growing my store, even though I'm having a pretty good sell-through rate, which we'll talk about in a second. I did start the week off with about 700 active listings, and that is continuing to grow. And and they're all in my house. I, I did a number of listed items of 69. So my goal is to do 10 per day. And I don't know what happened where it only ended up being 69. <laughs> so I was one off the pace for this week, but I am all about consistency. And I've talked about this in the live stream that I did this last week, setting a minimum target for yourself and making it a non-negotiable is something that I'm really good at. And I think it's something that people struggle with, but that's how I've been able to be really consistent with my listings. And that's how I'm able to really count on consistent sales. So I did 69 listings and that brought in a total value to my closet of $4,155, which is pretty good. So as you can see, I listed 69 and I sold 36. So roughly it's about 50%. And for me, I like to be anywhere between 50% to 100%, what I'm listing to what I'm selling. And so for me, this is all on track and it's been pretty consistent for the last several years. So if you don't have numbers like that, that's okay, but you should be looking at these kinds of things so that you can get an idea of how to forecast your month, to get an idea of how you could increase your sales by increasing your productivity. There's lots of ways that you can kind of tinker with it, but these are the main metrics and numbers that you want to be taking a look at. Now let's get into the actual sales that I'll be sharing with you. Okay, so let's just scroll through like I usually do and kind of give you a high level view of all of the items that sold this week. I'm not going to discuss every single one, but I did pull out several that I felt were noteworthy and ready with you know a tip or something easy and interesting to talk about. So those are all the sales. First up, this is gonna take a second. I wanna make a point <laughs> and then I'm gonna go through the other sales more quickly. I posted on Instagram recently about paying up is hard to do. If you're someone that wants to pay up but are a little bit scared to pull the trigger, just know that for me, I have wanted to do it and this year is the year that I'm really trying to do it but I'm trying to do it in a deliberate, researched, thought out way and so I'm being being very careful and very cautious. I am paying up for a lot of things, but I'm trying to do it pretty deliberately. And I will say I haven't that I know of lost money on any one item yet. So 
knock on wood, that's good. But there's two things that I wanted to talk about real quick about paying up and then I'll go through all the sales more quickly. I've been paying up by purchasing items either online, let's say on ThreadUp or Poshmark or Swap.com or even at a buy sell trade store if I think I can, you know, make the arbitrage work. And so I've been paying sometimes $10 for an item, $15 for an item, $20 for an item, and sometimes even up to like $25 for an item. Now for me, I used to be a bin shopper. Now I've kind of gone to a more three and four dollar average cost of goods. So to do a $20 item is kind of scary for me. It makes me kind of like, Ugh. But I've been trying to do the research and feeling like, is this a quality item? Is there value here for it to sell? So for this particular example, this new with tag Cynthia Steph sequin cashmere cardigan, it's a good brand. It's a nice high retail value. I think I had it on ThreadUp and it didn't sell. Then I put it on Poshmark. And so I got an offer for $38. And so I paid probably around $20. I don't remember off the top of my head. I probably paid about 20, thinking that I'd like to like double or triple my money if I could. That's usually what I'm trying to to go after is double, triple my money on a higher end item. I'm not doing that here. I'm making maybe 10, maybe 15. Is it worth it to put out $20 of my own money only to make 10 or $15 profit when I could make 10 or $15 profit on an item that I buy for three and $4? I don't know, I'm not sure. It did sell, so therefore I did recoup my investment and I did realize the profit because it did sell. And so ultimately that's what we want, right? We don't wanna just buy items to have with potential profit, <laughs> we want items that sold with realized actual profit. So in this particular case, it was a success because I got my money back and I did make a profit. But I don't know that it was worth paying $20 for this sweater. And this is something that I'm kind of mulling around. So if you're a person that's concerned about paying up and want to talk about this more, let me know what questions you have or what things are bothering you or troubling you about it in the comments. And maybe I'll do a live about this because it's an area that I'd like to explore more. Also, the other note I'll make on this and then again, I'll go quickly through the rest, is that when you pay up for something, you have to also still make sure that it fits within your business model. Like for me, I like doing 50% off sales. I like doing name your price sales. I like sending aggressive offers to likers. And so for me, when you then pay up for an item and you've got this $20 cost in there, you need to account for that when you're doing all of these other sales generating promotions. What if you do a 50% offer, but you don't have it priced right, and then you lose money because somebody snagged that deal? So you do have to make sure when you're paying up that you're kind of thinking about what you normally do for your sales and promotions so that it all works out and you don't lose money. Okay, that's enough on that. Cynthia Steph sold for $38 and it was cashmere. Next up is another one that I paid up for, New With Tags Lululemon Noir Crop in True Navy. So these were really nice. I got them New With Tags on ThreadUp, flipped them over here to Poshmark, got my money back, definitely made a profit. But again, only about a 10 or $15 profit, not anything too crazy, maybe 20 bucks. Worth doing because because it sold, felt pretty comfortable because it was a new with Tags Lululemon item. But at the same time, is it worth tying up 20 of my dollars to maybe only get another $20 in profit? Maybe yes, maybe no. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Next up is this Vince ribbed short sleeve fitted tee in gray. Had it up for 35, 50% sale or 50% offer, whichever. I have $17 on that. So not too bad. It was kind of a basic top. So I'm not like super crazed about that. Next up, I don't know how to say this. <laughs> Do you know how to say this? Vacanable? 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 <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm one of those people that really does try to figure out how to say it, but I didn't look this up. I should have looked it up so I don't sound so ignorant, but it's a $286 roughly estimated retail value for these copper brown cords or corduroy pants. And I do put both of those keywords in and the title I have it as cords. And then in the description, I have it as corduroy pants. You may want to capitalize on both of them when you can. And they sold on an offer for $30, which was cool with me. It wouldn't be a Rebecca the reseller. What sold on Posh? Mark video without sharing with you a really fun boutique purchase. So here is a nice bundle of five jewelry items, the tassel earrings, the serpentine earrings, the layered charm chain, the starburst earrings, and the beaded multi-strand or the pearl multi-strand necklace. So that was a $58 bundle with free shipping. This is a great bundle for me. I have a very inexpensive buy cost for my jewelry items. So for me, selling a bundle like this where you can put all these little items 
items in one nice package and send them off and make a great amount of profit in one order is just wonderful and one of the reasons why I really love doing Poshmark boutique selling. So I like to have both. The next order I'll tell you, you know, is an example of why I like both. But if you are ever interested in building up your closet and your business and scaling up and freeing up your time, consider taking my Poshmark boutique course, which is down in the description below. Next up is this other bundle. So it has three boutique items and one thrifted item. And so I bring this up because two of the items are the exact same in different colors. I actually have three colors of this faux vegan leather belt. I have it in like a camel, which she didn't buy. I have it in coffee and black, which she did buy. So two of those, plus this waffle knit lantern cozy top. I had it in cream and it was selling well, so I decided to add the other color in brick. And so I bring this up just to say the variables of boutique items do matter. Sizes are one thing, yes, but then the colors and the variables of the print or whatever the options are do matter as well. They're not all created equal. And so don't just get really crazy about buying something and not really paying attention to what colors are on trend. If it sold well in one color, is adding another color a good idea? So in the lantern top, Top, I did and then in the the belts I knew right away that I was gonna order those three so that is a great bundle and then the athleta pants those were from my swap.com order and so I made a great profit on those as well so it was an $85 bundle no shipping discount I was loving that next up is another boutique bundle I don't think I'm sharing a lot of boutique bundles but this was one of those swim purchases so again the theme for this week as I said was swimsuits and sweaters sweaters and swimsuits and here was three swimsuits that sold in a bundle all from my Poshmark boutique to one customer. So it was a $57 price point with a shipping discount. Now these swimsuits, I have them in three different colors. And again, talking about that variable, I felt like the coffee brown, the brick red, and the black were good colors to play on for this season. They're high-waisted and they're just a really, really nice swimsuit and the quality is good. However, they're not selling for the right price point that I want. And so they're selling. I'm I'm still making a profit, but I'm not making as much profit as I'd like. So I may only do a small restock on these, see what happens with it. Because again, I'm happy to just sell the items. I've already done the work. The listings are created. So if I order more and restock it, there's really no more work on my part. But sometimes the boutique items do not work out as well as you hoped as far as your profit. Some really do. I've made a lot of money selling boutique swimsuits. But these particular three, for some reason, I'm not sure why they're not doing as well. But again, I'm still making profit. They're still selling. So it's still a win. It's just not as big of a win as I was hoping for on those. But the great thing about it and what I do talk about in the course is knowing how to find that, working around and mitigating that risk from the beginning. Next up is this J. Jill Floral Longline Maxi Cardigan. This sold on an offer for $37. This is such a beautiful piece. It was so heavy and I wrote thick, warm, and cozy because like it really was just a nice substantial piece. And I don't sell a lot of J. Jill anymore. I'm trying to, with the limited space that I have, keep it to just certain ASP, certain higher end items, but I knew this would sell. I knew that it was a really beautiful piece and I really wanted to sell it myself. Now do know I have been sharing all of the brands that I would sell myself if I had unlimited storage like J. Jill and Chico's. I, I like selling all of those brands. I will sell those brands. I just don't have the space for all of them right now but if you want to sell them you can get them in my reseller boxes. Those are in my second Poshmark closet. It's linked down below. I'm adding new kinds of boxes all the time. So I have new with tags, better brands, bread and butter, no size tag, and flawed items. So check those out. Yes, this J. Jill, I wanted to sell this myself. So $37. I thought that was great. Eileen Fisher cashmere silk oversized sweater. So again, from the swimsuits to the cashmere sweaters. Nice oversized black silk and cashmere. $48. Yes, please. And that's a size extra small. That's how oversized it was. These new with tags reformation, Cynthia high, high rise, um, high waisted, relaxed jeans. So these were a pay up item. They're in white and it's just so weird because they're in white. All of the Reformation like stock photos that I find have this like wash over, this like yellowy vintagey kind of coloring over it. I don't know. It drives me nuts. That's not my aesthetic. <laughs> but anyway, they're $128 jeans. I think I had them up for $75. I don't remember. And I took an order offer for $40. Again, along the same lines as those earlier items of want to recoup my investment, want to make a profit, kind of scared to hold out for more. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's how that went. Next up is this tie-dye caftan beach swim cover-up maxi dress. I have talked about this before. This sold for $27, so that might have been, I forget, it's either a 20% off offer or a 30% off offer, but I love selling this. It's starting to pick up now all of the swim cover-ups and swim, so even if it's cold where you are, if you don't have those things listed, you are really missing out. Whether it's boutique or thrifted, get those items up. This last week, I listed so many new with tag swimsuits, it's not even funny. So I am ready. I'm ready for them to buy. Next up is another swimsuit cover-up. This is a brand new item that I got in, Boho Gypsy Beach Goddess Swim Cover-Up in white. I also have it in black. So far, I've sold one in white and one in black. Both have gotten five-star reviews, so that makes me happy, and I feel like it's pretty on trend. So hopefully those do well. I did talk about this once before, but it's been a while. Wide rim bucket hat in black. So this, I have them up for 25. She sent me an offer for 20. I'm making plenty of money on this. Continues to get a five-star review. It's just a nice basic hat, but it's selling and it's selling again and again. And then this one that sold made me add other types of styles and variables to my boutique, which are also selling now. So hats may be my new thing. Next up is this Athleta Mystique Shore Break dress in floral. This was again part of that swap.com order that I did. I did pay up for those items. I think the average buy cost on them was about $12. So here I'm not again making as much money as I'd like because I had this up for $50, but I'll take a $25 offer. I'll take the couple of dollars that I made on that and flip it into something else. So I'm really okay with this particular one, but this is the one I really wanted to show you. Athleta Fleece Line legging tight their size small they sold for full price at $50 and I was like yes because again I bought them for 12 I made 40 minus the 12 what is that $28 so that's double what I paid you know like I'm okay with that kind of flip if I can put 12 and end up with a $28 profit almost every time that's the way to pay up for things so I wanted to show you like some examples of ones where the pay up was a little bit scary <laughs> but it still worked out and then one like this where it worked out exactly how it should, which is pay 12, sell it for 50, get $40 after your fees, $28 profit on that item. That's a win. So I wanted to show you like the evolution of this particular week and how I paid up for some items and didn't pay up for other items and where it all ended up. The last thing I'll mention here is that the boutique sales report. So I showed you some boutique items, but I did sell a lot more than just that. So I did $417 in boutique sales. And again, Again, that's roughly about half and it seems like this trend has been continuing it's like a little less than half of my total sales for that week and I'm pretty cool with that and it's one of the reasons why I encourage people if you're interested because I know not everyone is but if you're interested in getting more profit for doing less work consider a Poshmark boutique you don't have to have a separate one I like having them combined I do have the course of course I want to tell you about the course because I made the course and I'd like for you to buy the course but even if you don't buy my course and you just do it on your own. I think that there is a way to do a Poshmark boutique well. There is a way to do it profitably. And I think I figured it out. And that's what I share with you. You may not want to follow my advice, but if you think you can do it on your own, I hope that you can. And I would encourage you to try in a measured way because selling an item again and again is really how you get out of the reselling grind and make more money for the same amount of work or more money for less time. <laughs> so that's my like second major point I guess I have this week. But okay, that's all I have for you this week. Thanks so much for joining me again for another What Sold on Poshmark video. I hope you are having a great week of sales. I'd love for you to let me know down in the comments below how your sales were this week and are you having a sweaters and swimsuits week just like me let me know in the comments below like the video on the way out subscribe so we can hang out again and I will see you in the next video hopefully you will watch one of the next videos that are coming up here and check out the description as well bye